So this is our final installment of our expert panels. We have a uh, nice group of finance professionals with us tonight. Uh, first, up here on the left, is Professor Brian Adams, Associate Professor of Finance, also Associate Dean of our graduate programs. We have Pat Becker, uh, CEO of Becker Capital, President Becker Capital. So that's really uh, great to connect, all of which are alumni. Tyler Lucky here, who uh, recently has taken a new role at Nike, uh, Finance Innovation Process Improvement. That stuff. He'll talk to you more about that at Ben Presser. Uh, I think he's two years out of the university, works at Fisher Investments in Vancouver, uh, all of which are going to share some of their story about why they chose finance as a profession, sort of some ideas that you should think about as you're uh, considering that, and other types of uh, things for your consideration. The first question I have is, you guys are all freshmen, right? Okay, so you don't understand much about the finance major yet. Um, in finance, there's basically two tracks. You can be in investments where you're advising people uh, on investments, or like Mr. Becker here, you're investing their money. Um, or you can be in a corporate finance function where you're helping a corporation raise capital, put capital to work, um, determine how to distribute capital. That's something that Tyler has been and will be uh, yeah, uh, operating in at Nike. Um, so our classes are usually along those two lines. Uh, initially, a lot of people, when they think about finance, they think about investing in the stock market. But the stock market is um, really not the majority of finance. The majority of finance is credit. It's lending and, and, uh, and borrowing money. So a lot of finance is, uh, is dealing with that market, the credit market, more so than the stock market. Um, what types of strengths, skills, and abilities do students in your majors normally have? Uh, motivation. Um, if you want to be a finance major, you can get through your finance classes. Just like if you want to be accounting, marketing, whatever major you want, you have to be motivated, have to want to be in those classes. We all know what it's like to be in a class we don't want to be in. Time drags, and we just want to get out of there. We really don't listen to the material and try to understand it. So you have to be motivated. They have to want to learn about finance. Um, why should someone major in your discipline? Um, it's a dynamic area. Financial markets are always changing. There's always new innovation. And there's always a need for someone out there who understands financial markets and understands how to raise capital and how to put capital in. Um, you can make a lot of money in finance. Uh, why shouldn't someone major in your discipline? If you're just in it for the money. If you're just in it for the money, you're not motivated to learn. Like I said, you will never fully understand finance and you will get beat by somebody better than you. Um, what do you think is the biggest misperception regarding the discipline? Uh, when people think of finance, they think of numbers. They think it's all about numbers. When they get into my classes, all they want to talk about are the formulas and how do I use the formulas to get to the answer. Formulas are just tools. It's the concepts of finance that really matter. You know, what are you trying to do? Why are you trying to raise money? Why are you trying to invest money? Um, it's the basic questions. And finance is a really simple idea. Yes, there are some complex formulas that are involved in, in making decisions, but it, numbers is not the, it's not the basis of finance. Finance is more about concepts and just understanding basic economics and accounting principles. Um, what else do you think is important to share uh, with the students? Um, you don't have to start in finance to end up in finance. Uh, a, a lot of uh, my friends started as engineers, started as marketing majors, started as accountants, and moved over into finance. And again, you will all take 305 uh, at some point, probably in your junior year, right, Pete? In your junior year. Um, and in that class, you'll get a feeling of finance and what finance is all about. And uh, you may take more classes going forward. But uh, again, if you're motivated, if you want to know more about finance, if you like talking about, uh, uh, you know, like the fiscal cliff, Stuff like that is very interesting to us. Yes, it is. Uh, um, or if you want to talk about how to make money in uh, investing in GameStop, um, then, uh, then uh, this is the major for you. Okay, so they have some uh, uh, follow some questions here, but I really think the, the 
key to this, we're going to do this after this, is going to be a Q&A session with you. Uh, I think that's where I get the most out of this. I think that that's where you'll get the most out of this at all. I'm going to run through this quickly and we'll leave, I think, uh, if you have some curiosity for the uh, Q&A. Uh, the question is, why did you major in your discipline? Uh, I graduated from the University of Portland in 1988. When I graduated from business school, there wasn't a finance major. So I picked marketing. Uh, in hindsight, that was somewhat of a blessing for me uh, in that uh, I got right out of college and I took a job at a finance company. Um, but that marketing side helped me. Uh, frankly, there's a lot of smart people in the world. Uh, and when you're working with some people, there's, in fact, most people are smarter than me. But what a lot of people can't do is develop relationships and develop uh, webs of influence. And I think that's something that's helped me in my career. Uh, in, you know, just whether it be my university of Portland um, sphere, my Jesuit high school sphere, my uh, professional sphere, uh, whether it's working with attorneys, whether it's working with accountants, all that has helped also uh, in my career over time. Uh, it says, describe your career path. So I graduated from the University of Portland, and as I said, in 1988. I went immediately to work for General Motors Acceptance Corporation, which is the finance division of GM back in Detroit. Uh, our job was to audit car dealerships, uh, finance the flooring, uh, and, and do collections. And I learned a lot about the world in a short period of time. When you're a repo man, it sounds pretty exciting on TV. Uh, but that was my first job to put you out in the field. Before you even lend anybody money, you got to learn how to collect it. And so, uh, all the different stories, it just, uh, it was an interesting job as a woman into graduate. And learned a lot about the world very quickly. Uh, from there, I was hired away, went to Toyota on credit, and did, did more of the same with the dealer, kind of accounting audit side for them, which was really a cool job because they gave me a Toyota 400. Travel over the west and, and ski, so that was a pretty good job. And then after that, I, I, I was going to be transferred. And that's the thing is, as you get out of school and you look at whatever job you're going for, some jobs require you to move. And if Portland is very important to you, which it was to me, um, I took a job where I could be um, stationed here, and that was on the investment side. So usually, when you're on the investment side, you're in a firm. To build a client list, go to the direct clients are there. So I went to work for Merrill Lynch, and then from Merrill Lynch, I went to work for uh, Growth Securities, I did institutional and, and retail, retail uh, sales there and investments. And then I uh, went to work at my father's firm in 1996, back in capital management, uh, and I'm a technology analyst there.
colorists, material people, people who don't care anything about finance at all, right? And then the finance world, you have everybody worried about kind of the valuation of your stock. So I'm the bridge between those two worlds and help these guys understand these guys. And ultimately, all the work that we do on product um, translates into kind of our earnings per share at the end of the day when we boil it down. So that's why I, uh, why I focus on the most. Uh, what type of skills and strengths are important for you to have in your job? Um, first and foremost, you need to master the fundamentals of anything you do in the job that you're taking. Um, so for you guys, it's trying to figure out what major you want to focus on, right? Once you find that, be the best that you can be in that specific major because your professors have contacts, about contacts, about contacts, and they'll get you in touch with people like us up here that will eventually turn into a job like how I got my job from right out of college. And that's how it works. That's how the world works. Um, it's who you know and making sure that if you are doing the best that you can, you're at the top of your class. Um, so that's that's extremely important to master the fundamentals of everything. Um, and on top of that, like I mentioned it, just building relationships. Um, all you guys will be here for four years, hopefully. Uh, maybe longer, for some of you. Um, but just making sure you actually share some relationships you have with them because you never know when they're going to come handy later down the road. Um, what do you like most about your current job? I get to work with shoes every day. Uh, so I get to work with the marketing people who come up with the ideas for new shoes, uh, the designers who actually design them. I work with the factory groups who actually manufacture them. Um, I know everything about the entire process of how to start and finish a shoe uh, at Nike, which is pretty, pretty exciting for me. Uh, what do you like least? Um, so I work in a world where data is extremely important and uh, to make decisions that are uh, cost effective and need information, right? And the biggest problem is we don't have systems to actually gather and analyze that data. So I'm working in the Stone Age when um, I know I can be working a lot faster in uh, the 21st century. Um, so that's one of the most frustrating parts of uh, my job, but the shoes, playing with those shoes actually make, make it a lot better. Uh, what else do you think is the most important to share with the students? Um, right now, I mean, just kind of listening to us, but really trying to figure out what's, what your passion is, what you're passionate about, and do the best that you can at what that is. Um, you're going to figure that out. Just, just keep working as hard as you can, and things will, things will fall together. I mean, it's worked for me, and it's worked for a lot of people I know, so that's kind of the advice that I give to you guys. All right, guys, uh, I'm Ben Pressler. Uh, I graduated in 2011 uh, from this lovely university. Um, so I think I can provide a pretty unique perspective for you guys, being that I've only, I'm only about a year and a half removed from uh, being here just like you guys are, and about five years removed from sitting in your guys' seats. Um, starting with why did I major in, in finance? I was I was uh, always kind of a kid who would collect his money rather than spend it. Um, you know, I was I always had like almost like a bank. Um, I, had, I always needed one of each bill. It was kind of weird, but I, I realized that um, one of my passions was collecting money and figuring out ways to build and, uh, and accumulate more. So it, it kind of fit naturally that I felt like I should be going into the investments world. Um, and like Dr. Adams was saying, finance you kind of split into two separate realms. There's the investments world and then there's kind of the retail finance. Um, right now I'm in the investments world. Um, currently I work for Fisher Investments. We're a private money manager. We manage about uh, $40 billion for uh, both private clients and some of the world's largest institutions. So. Uh, once you get into investments, or uh, you can kind of break it down further into individuals as well as institutions. So institutions can be large companies, endowments, like the University of Portland, Portland's actual endowment. Someone needs to invest those funds. Um, so um, I knew pretty much right away that I wanted to be in finance. Um, I, I got Started up, uh, started going to Dr. Adams classes, got involved with the UPIA group as well. Um, during my 
senior year, I had a pretty valuable internship at, at an investment firm, uh, an institutional investment firm called RB Coons and Associates. Um, so I sort of was able to utilize that as a springboard on my or on my resume moving forward and try and find a good job for myself. Uh, when I graduated in May of 2011, I started pretty much right after at, at Fisher. Um, reason being, I, I was pretty motivated. I wanted to get started. I wanted um, to just jumpstart my career and, and get get moving. Um, I spent about uh, 14 months at Fisher in a role called the Client Account co Coordinator role, excuse me. And basically what that role was, was we were bridge I was bridging the gap between new clients who just signed on from a salesperson and getting them on board with Fisher Investments. So, for instance, a client has um, assets scattered throughout bank accounts, uh, held at different investment firms, etc. I was the one who figured out how to most efficiently get their assets on board with us. So after about 14 months of that, um, I had been doing pretty well and I was moved into a manager role. So now what I currently do is I manage a team of nine individuals who did what I used to do. Um, so it's kind of changed a little bit. Now, now I'm uh, still in the finance world, still in the investments world, but um, I'm having to deal with people and I'm interviewing. And so you actually get a uh, yeah, so uh, even though you may, the, the moral of the story is, even though you may get started down the path uh, towards investments, right now I'm managing people, I'm, I'm hiring, I, I'm doing things that I maybe weren't in, wasn't in, anticipating from the get-go, um, but I'm able to do that now, and uh, it, it's definitely a challenge. Um, so how does, how does my finance background uh, relate to my current job of uh, being a manager. Um, I think with finance, uh, Dr. Adams, I think, was uh, discussing, you both need your foundation, but you also need to be very hardworking and you need to be willing to have sort of the problem-solving skills and the analytical ability. Um, I have a, right now a, a number of things that I have to work on in, in, a, in a given day, and problems come up instantaneously without any notice. So you have to be able to think on your feet uh, and react quickly and calmly under pressure. Um, if that's not something that you're very comfortable doing, I wouldn't necessarily say that the investment world is, is right for you. Um, that kind of ties into the skills and strengths of, of of being in investments. Um, like I said, you need to be able to think on your feet, uh, problem solve, multitask. You need to be willing to outwork your peers. Um, a lot of investment firms will require longer hours than maybe some, some other majors. You don't see a lot of nine to fives in the investment world. Um, so you need to be the person who's willing to come in at 6 a.m., like, like Pat was saying, and leave at 6, 7 p.m. if needed. Not every job is going to be like that, but that, but if you really want to catapult yourself and separate yourselves from your peers in investments and, and a lot of times in the finance world, uh, that's something you need to be willing to do. So I think a, a competitive mindset and a really uh, a drive to succeed are two really important things. Two things that I always look for when interviewing new candidates to bring onto the firm. Um, so those would be two things I would I would definitely encourage that you have inside of you if, if you want to take this sort of career path. Uh, what do I like most about my current job? Every day is completely different. Um, like I said, I have, a, I have a team of nine, so I'm managing them, but I'm also dealing with uh, some of the largest custodian banks in the world, dealing with uh, managers at those banks, managers within my firm. I'm also talking with clients, some of which are uh, high net worth individuals on a daily basis. Um, so you, you get to uh, have a, a wide range of activities during a given day and, and you, things don't get very repetitive. Um, something that I like about my firm in general is um, we're, we promote a meritocracy, so it's a merit-based system. 
Um, when you come in, we don't expect, uh, we don't promote or uh, give opportunity or bonuses based on tenure or connections within the firm, but rather the people who are really performing uh, and, and have proven themselves, regardless of how long they've been with the firm, will get those new opportunities. So I like that. I also like our firm's very young. So uh, you know, if you were to come in new to Fisher Investments, uh, you'd be surrounded by people in similar age groups, similar backgrounds, similar stages in life, whereas a lot of other companies, you may not have that opportunity. You might be the younger than a lot of your peers. Um, so it's nice to be able to connect with your coworkers. That's another thing that I really like. Uh, what do I like least? Um, I have about a 25 minute commute, I don't like that. Um, there is a lot of pressure and that can be difficult. Um, you have to be able to handle it and, uh, and work through it and do so calmly and, and, uh, and with a level head. But it, it can build on you and you need to be able to control yourself. I, I tell people a lot, uh, a lot of people on my team, you need to be kind of like the, the, uh, the swan floating on the water. So you're, you're smooth and calm over uh, to, the, to the blind eye and uh, to someone watching on the shore, but underneath your legs are working really hard, right? So you need to be the, the person who can stay calm and collected despite uh, the amount of workload that you may think or the pressure that may be on you at the time. Um, what I think is important for you guys, so the majority of you in here are freshmen. Um, I don't think that you need to figure out your major right away. I don't think that the major that you do end up in will end up being what you, what path you, you go in in your career. For example, Pat said he majored in marketing, okay. and now he's the president of an investment management company. So um, don't think that it's the end of the world if um, you, you either start in finance and end up somewhere else, or you end in finance and when you're done, you want to try a different path. And even if you've been working for a few years and you want to try something different, those options are always available to you. You guys are young, you'll continue to be young, um, even at several years after graduation. Um, so right now, try to figure out to the best of your ability what interests you, what motivates you, what drives you, and then use that to, uh, to select a, a major and, and hopefully a career from there. But it's certainly not the end of the world if the major you're in isn't exactly uh, where you end up or, or where you are down the road. Um, and lastly, take advantage of the resources that you have here. Um, I've been doing a, a lot of recruiting on other campuses lately. Uh, the University of Portland does a lot for you guys in, with regards to setting up internships, job shadows, uh, this right here. These types of things aren't offered at a lot of other campuses. Um, so try not to take it for granted. You can really use this as a springboard to help develop your resume and eventually launch your career. So take advantage of all the resources and opportunities that you have here. The question was, you, you'd like to stay in Portland, he wants to know if there's plenty of opportunities with finance, correct? Um, I think I can answer this being that I most recently went through the job search. I initially thought that I wanted to leave the Portland area, and it turned out there was more opportunity here than I anticipated. Um, now, there are a lot of opportunities in New York and Chicago, uh, San Francisco as well, but there's certainly opportunities here. Uh, the best way to go about finding them would be to network. Uh, use your resources, use your professors. Um, that's the best way to find, because we, we may not have some of the larger investment firms here, but we have a number of smaller boutique firms, uh, uh, firms like Fisher, uh, firms like uh, Pat, uh, Pat's company. Uh, a lot of names out there that you can definitely connect with, with and there's a lot of UP alumni connections if you do some digging. Any 
even if your your interest isn't in in investments, so it could be in accounting, it, it could be in the finance area where you work. There, there's other groups to get involved with there, and so whether it be you know it could be the American Electronics Association (AEA) as a body here, or there is a venture capitalist group, private equity type groups. You know, with Facebook, these days you can find them online, but you got to go out and meet these people face to face. Uh, the University of Portland has a, a great program with the uh, with the Nike thing. There's no set formula. Uh, I work with a gentleman who graduated from MIT who you probably would want to even share a beer with. Uh, really, the best analyst I've ever worked with. Uh, I, there's another analyst that uh, is, is much more of a top down, bottom up. And so uh, I'd like to tell you that there's, there's a path to do it that way. Uh, I, I see so many different ways. Um, it, it's, it's really the hard work, as I think you heard, uh, talk about the separation that you put yourself between the rest of the field. Um, I do think that's, uh, at least when somebody employs people, it's something that you look at. Um, but it's, you know, the one thing I would say is everybody I work with is passionate about what they do. So, <coughs> You might have an interest in finance, but not passionate about it. Um, I, I think that should, you know, your little voice inside you should, you should listen to it. That's what you guys are doing. I don't want to pigeonhole anybody to listen to it. I just, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. I think just add to that in terms of just separating yourself from everybody. Um, that's, that's something that I, I think I, I did um, at Conversion first um, come to that I actually work for is just really pushing in the time and finding a, a niche for yourself. Um, so when I had started there, um, no one was really covering fixed income um, too, too closely. And I kind of noticed that and took interest in it and started just covering uh, the work myself and just taking that initiative. And it turned out to be um, they, they gave me that role because um, I was doing it. And it, it really helped because uh, six months into the job, we went through a round of layoffs, and I was the only one covering fixed income, and I made an asset out of myself for the company, so I protected myself, and I was successful, and that ended up getting me the job at Nike, right? So, I mean, it's all about really working as hard as you can, and trying to find a niche for yourself, and bringing and adding value to uh, whatever company or uh, investment firm that you're actually working for, because that, that goes along. What does your job look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, for me specifically, it changes every single day. Um, the information changes, uh, the people change. Um, but at a high level, um, I go into work and I look at uh, the cost and profitability of footwear. So specifically, I manage a portfolio of shoes um, for core performance footwear in, at Nike. So it's all the footwear that we sell under $85 uh, for adults. Um, so it's probably, a couple hundred 
compared to like types of shoes, and I look at the cost and profitability of each of those. And I work with the teams uh, that design, develop, and market those products. So I help them understand the finance side of things. So uh, that's that's kind of the fun that I, I get to deal with. Uh, it's people who understand absolutely nothing about finance and trying to influence them to make the right decision that actually benefits the company as well as the consumer at the same time. Um, so that's. At a high level, that's kind of what I do, but uh, what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis changes every day. Um, so, I mean, it's just being open and willing to accept what's thrown your way and just having uh, the confidence and, and just getting confident working through that and knowing that you can figure it out. Um, so, I mean, you guys develop some pretty fundamental skills here at UP. Uh, you use those and you can be confident and someone throws you a problem and you can solve it. Um, it's just matter of time, right? And the quicker you do that, the better you get, the better you are, and the more valuable you are. So that's, that's, that's my job on a day-to-day basis. Uh, that's definitely a tough question. Um, I would say, um, I'll talk a little bit more about what the people on my team do. Um, it's more of an entry-level role. Um, their responsibilities are uh, throughout the day, they have a, a roster of about 60 clients, so 60 high net worth individuals. And their job is to monitor the um, setup of their accounts at our custodian banks. So for instance, um, we may use someone like Merrill Lynch to house the client's assets. Our, our, uh, my team member's responsibility is to make sure that those accounts are set up appropriately, and then follow up throughout the day for those 60 different clients on the various transfer of their assets. So at one moment in time, they may have $100 million moving between their, their client base. So they need to figure out um, how to most effectively and efficiently monitor that movement of those assets because obviously it's a large sum of money for each of these clients and probably a large sum of their life savings. So it's very important that they're on top of that. Um, so I would say that's their key responsibilities for myself. Uh, I oversee that, I have a number of meetings, I do some interviewing, um, career development type stuff for, for those folks on my team, so. I kind of covered what I did, but it, uh, you know, because your president of the firm just brings everything, everything from looking at what is the healthcare plan, what, what like the company, how much are we spending on that, is it uh, competitive, is it top quartile, um, all those sort of things. Regulation is a huge part of this business now, and spend a lot of time uh, talking to our attorney about how things need to be worded, and the sort of things, and the costs involved with that. Uh, and then the clients, the investment side. Uh, so, echoing what they said, it, for at least for me, every every day is uh, I, sometimes I'm not quite sure how my day is going to go. Today was I, I described today. Was kind of perfect. I didn't know I was going to Spokane tomorrow uh, until about uh, 3 o'clock today. So, looking forward to that trip. For a 30 minute meeting. <laughs> Next question. Um, do you guys have your CFA in it? And like, why, why or why not? I don't. I should. Um, I was studying. Back in uh, 08 when the market crashed and uh, just took the priorities. Uh, my time is at this point in my life, I'm 47 years old. Uh, the commitment will be at the moments. Uh, my wife's getting her PhD right now, lives in the United State, so it's not uh, realistic. But, uh, that doesn't stop me from being my experience and giving advice that I'm not actually following, which is uh, you should go out. If you want to be in the investment business and do, do what I do, it's almost a prerequisite. We posted a job on our website, uh, and we, we received applications from all over the country. Portland is an incredibly competitive market. Um, you know, we weren't, we didn't used to be a cool city. We're a cool city now. And so you got people from uh, Florida, North Carolina, New York, um, and with the troubles the finance industry has had, the investment industry, it's just kind of concentrated the talent that's out there. So when we put it up on the website, we have two folders that we need to complete. 
one was CFA, two was non CFA. And uh, when we got to the final, we did 18 interviews via Skype, which is kind of interesting. And then we cut it down to five. Of the five, uh, there was a level two candidate for CFA in there, um, two had their CFA, two didn't. To, and all, all of them had graduate school experience. And so we're extending an offer today to two of them. One is 43, 44 years old. Starting salary will be $150,000 is the offer we made today. Um, and then the second one is a 28-year-old with seven years of experience in the investment business because we, we don't hire out of college. We, we tend to hire somewhere else. The starting salary there is 100000 And our firm's a little unique. Um, we, we very much believe in merit bonuses. It's not based on your age. Uh, but you can make up to one times your salary in bonus. Um, so there's a fair amount of motivation to, to put in the hours, be successful, do the things that are necessary for clients to be successful. Um, and that's on top of a, a, a robust uh, health care plan. Uh, we pay for uh, put braces on kids' teeth. Uh, we do pay for parking, and we have 20% contribution uh, to their pension voucher in fact, which is almost not here. So it's a uh, it's a lucrative business, um, but it, it requires we're hiring, hiring the best and, and the brightest when we do it. So um, I would say this: going through this process. Open it to the entire firm where people could interview. I I thought they, they kind of would find themselves gravitating toward a Cornell grad, somebody who went to Harvard, something like that. And it, it was the opposite. Um, there was, and I, hopefully, I'm not offending anybody here, but um, there was a certain amount of arrogance that came across in the interviews from some of those schools, and and the. And the Applicants that went to the University of Portland of the world, and one went to South Florida. Um, I was surprised where people have passed where they went to school and they bought the person, they bought the brand, and what brand did they bring through in the interview process. And something I always talk to my children about is what is your brand? Who are you and what do you sell? And that, that develops you every day. A common thing that everybody's saying they're talking about here is differentiation. So this idea of the CFA is one way to differentiate yourself. It stands for Chartered Financial Analyst. So everybody knows what an MBA is, okay? But an MBA is a, is a general graduate degree for a Master's in Business Administration. And it's not so much for undergrads in business. It's a, a, originally meant for people who didn't get their undergrad degree in business. They got it in history or... Um, engineering and they wanted to come back and learn about business. But initially it was the MBA that differentiated you. Now it's the CFA. The CFA is three levels and each level takes you about 250 hours worth of study to pass and the pass rates are under 40% to get through the first level. So this is a highly challenging um, differentiation process but the people that get through it, at least through level one, you are differentiated from everybody else. So. Pat is absolutely right. Yes, um, it helps you go to the name recognition MBA programs like Wharton or Stanford or Harvard, but it's more for their networks than anything else. You can differentiate yourself anymore just by passing the first level to see if that if finance really matters to you. And that you can do as a student. You can spend the 250 hours as an undergrad you get a reduced fee only cost you three fifty as opposed to over a thousand bucks and you can sit for the CFA before you graduate past level one and I guarantee you you will have a job by the time you graduate. But it's not easy. No, I do not have a CFA. <laughs> One of the reasons why I haven't uh, studied or staff work, my, uh, my company right now doesn't require or uh, really look at 
as happening, it's certainly a very prestigious uh, um, honor. It's just not something that is required for a lot of positions in, in my firm. That's why I have to uh, tackle it. However, a number of the companies that I interviewed for out of college were you either needed to have begun studying, you needed to have passed level one, or you needed to, if they hire you, you needed to pass it by a certain date. So um, it may depend, but it's certainly a, a very good distinction to have. for yourself in stocks and bonds, etc. Um, paying for college, does that. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend all of you guys taking that, whether or not you take the finance route. Uh, it's going to be something that's very helpful for you. If you take good notes, you can probably use that for, for years to come. I'd like to add 
uh, something nice about finance is even if you go the corporate route or kind of the investment firm route, um, you can use it for just about anything out there. Because um, if you have an analytical background, um, you know how companies work and how money flows, um, you can use it for just about anything. And, and you'll have that background with you for the rest of your life, which is pretty nice. Um, so if, if I wanted to get into, like, say, the marketing world, I would have a uh, leg up on everyone else who just focused on kind of the marketing side of things and maybe didn't have a finance background or anything other for that matter. I mean, it's incredibly valuable and it'll help you actually get a job out of college, which is kind of what your big goal is, right? So. Something I was just thinking about, I uh, think Colton, you were talking to me about this, so thanks, thanks um, You know, it's fairly easy at the University of Portland to get a double major. And that is a differentiator out there. I mean, if somebody walks in and to an employer and says, I've got a double major in finance and accounting, for example. I, I think that's a leg up. I, I think that's a strength. Um, I, don't, I don't see that too often out there. Um, and I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's incredibly difficult to do that. Accounting and finance is well, easy for cold. <laughs> That's right. If you have the motivation and you can double major in, like I said, OTM and finance or accounting and finance, you will pretty much have your choice of jobs when you get out of there. We don't see that changing. That's good advice. Okay, that's all the time we have for this evening. Uh, let's give our panelists a round of applause.